Why do you have to be this way? Blame my this parents. This is why we bully you. Met you. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I met your parents. I don't know what to say to them. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just say sorry. <laughs> Do you ever think about the fact that there are so many genetic failures that had to happen for this to ha- come out? <laughs> this is genetic this is failures? like this is like what you losing the genetic successes? lottery. No, this is what losing the genetic lottery like fifteen times over looks like, boys and girls. <laughs> He's just self burning himself at this point. We're just one like, of my mm. favorite insults I've ever heard is is like is when you go, you're just a side effect of an out of date condom. <laughs> that's oh, great shit. that's fantastic that is that's how i feel burn. with alex well <laughs> actually you know what that I'll works that works because i was not planned Hello everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. Nailed it, first time. <laughs> I'm your host, Nitai, the so-called proclaimed, self-proclaimed poser extraordinaire. I'm joined by our fleeting fox senpai, Alex. Woohoo! Hey, let me tell you something. Tell me something. We're going to get into it tonight, boys. That's uh, not a great pickup line in, on a first date. <laughs> we've been together for eight years this is not our first date uh we're also joined by our big black td goth girl Chinoda. <laughs> there's no I, way he wrote that down in his name what i didn't know he didn't no oh my god I was going off the the way. i'm going off script bro okay clearly and we have our czar of source material john Obviously, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> By who? By you. See, you threatened to take away his JoJo card. John, he doesn't watch sports. He doesn't get it. Oh, it's never mind. I forgot that you're not American enough for me. You have to explain it. You, <laughs> no, you if I have to American explain the being. joke, then it's not funny anymore. <laughs> the joke is for those who don't watch sports and most professional sports athletes have media obligations. And sometimes when they're pissed off, they just say, I'm here so I don't get fined. Seriously? Oh. Yes. I didn't know That's that. So sad. <laughs> Are they like contract? Like, is it like a contract Yes, they're contractually thing? obligated to do media obligations. Oh. I am contractually obligated to do a minimum amount of episodes with Alex a month. <laughs> How are you doing so far? Not he great. wants to unalive. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to unalive himself so bad right now. So oh, today we're eat. starting a new series of sportcasts. Uh, we're doing the uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Woo! Woo-hoo! Um, yeah. Our last series of sportcasts was the Monogatari series. We might come back to doing it more because there's new anime coming out, which is great. Yeah, but uh, that that book is now closed, and uh, we said a long time ago we'll discuss JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because all of us like JoJo's, right? Who doesn't like JoJo? I mean, yeah, I like it a lot. I mean, a it's, lot. It, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good, guys. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I literally just had my DVD and I, I just put it away and I don't know where it is now. Terry so. stole it. <laughs> Terry stole maybe. it. Stole it. My goddamn Terry have stolen it. Who knows? Must be the but work of an enemy stand. It God, must be the. God We're not even it, talking Terry. about that yet. All right, we're talking about part one. Literally, arguably, arguably the worst like part in all of JoJo's. Yeah, we That's will be spoiling part one for all of its entirety. Uh, but before then, just a bit more context, just in case uh, anyone who's listening to this podcast hasn't wait, hasn't seen JoJo for some reason. So this this like this show started that originally a manga um, is a global phenomenon sold over 120 million copies and it's part of multiple anime adaptations video games gucci clothing lines uh some live action movies apparently and an an actual presentation yeah and an actual presentation at the louvre the actual louvre which is i think araki is the only mangaka to have paintings featured in the louvre He's the only Japanese artist to be featured in the Louvre, period. There you go, which oh, is that's insane. insane. That is insane. Um, the lasting legacy of this series can be felt over 
different types of media. It's crazy. Like the joke is, once you go JoJo, you ne can never go back because it's everywhere. Everything. Once you is go a JoJo, JoJo you reference. become gay. Yeah, like literally all the memes. Right? Is that a JoJo reference? Yeah, it's it, it it's funny getting new people to watch JoJo because you can see their descent into madness. Because you'll just be walking down the street, they'll see these mannequins in a clothing store. They're like, "Yo, do do the JoJo pose." <laughs> Everything Fine. is JoJo. Everything is JoJo. You start seeing it everywhere. Can I ask a quick question though for the people that are yeah. here? Because very few people I've heard that got into JoJo's say they got in through part one. So what was everyone's like introduction to JoJo's? Part three, like a lot of normal people. Uh, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yada yada. <laughs> It, uh, I can't, uh, I can't beat you up if I don't get closer. Wherever that line was, it's can't beat like, the shit you without getting closer. Without getting closer. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, yo, what, what is actually going on here? And then like the stupid fist of the North Star style fighting with like ghosts and stuff. I was like, okay, this seems interesting enough. Let me go, let me go actually like watch this. And then you get to part one, you're like, what? Where's the ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> Where's all the ghosts? Where, where's the yada 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 does a? I guess there is technically one. He says it. Jonathan he does, say, does say it one time. He does say it once. <laughs> he laid the eggs. Yeah. Um, what about you, Chinoda? How did you get into it? As for me, I mean, I, I knew about the memes for a while, and I always did intend to eventually watch it. I didn't watch it until I met up with Alex. And we watched the first episode uh, in the hotel room together. This is actually the first year I went to Otakon. We actually yeah. watched the first three oh. episodes of JoJo's Part 1 in, in our hotel room. Why wouldn't That's you crazy. at least let him watch Part or Episode 4 so that way he actually had something to look forward to? No, <laughs> no, no. no we had time you can't to do that. Did enjoy it. You can't do that. You have to start from the beginning. Yeah, I, I'm no. not one of those that hate part one or anything I, I i it doesn't matter what the media is i'm like i'll just start from the beginning whatever like yeah whether it's bad definitely. good or bad john you you asked that question this is a dude who watches the shittiest isekai ever and says it's pretty good nah I, cheers bro I, just think that <laughs> I find it hard to believe that people would watch part one or read part one or watch part one and be like i want more of this <laughs> mainly because of how Me? it starts off like the first so the first three episodes of JoJo's is uh that entire arc, right? It's like it's nonsensical. So it does set up the pace. Or it's the, incredible. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> it, it sets up quite we'll a get lot to of it, but... how traditional JoJo's is structured. Like it, yeah. it is the the exoskeleton of how we structure our, our new JoJo's. But it's just I like think... it's so it's so crazy and nonsensical. Like who is this? evil ass dude just being purely freaking evil bro <laughs> I, I think it's incredible being. how because because so the manga first started uh serialization back in 1986 and with so so watching part one it feels like an artifact like from a different time you know it's mm -hmm. definitely showing like from what time period it is because like a lot of like creators first like you know works or whatever you can see the influence from something from their own comp contemporaries. Like part one feels like kind of adjacent to Fist of the North Star in some the way it's written in terms of like, so we got your big muscular like main character and he's gonna beat the shit out of everyone. And he's a good guy, you know, whatever. It's certainly but, like Fist of the North Star and its character designs. Yeah, it's yeah, like but, but then you get there. all these oddities, but then you get all these oddities, and we're like, that's definitely JoJo. And the craziest thing about JoJo that I can say, it's been running for so long, for like more than 40 years, but still we have nothing like it. There's not anything like it. And the craziest part is the more it kept going, and we'll see it the more we get into the series through this podcast, there's more and more and more to like, man, this is not like anything I've ever seen, which is it crazy really has its because own it's so flavor of uniqueness. Well, one of the yeah. crazy things is that, um, so on a lot of like ranking websites they consider jojo's at least part one to be horror and i completely forgot how much mm -hmm. like gore there actually is in part one because yeah. i was like oh, oh man there's people being impaled people's heads getting just like exploded i was like it's gothic it's very... horror yeah, yeah it's like even victorian it, I, horror 
it's Victoria. And I was like, I completely forgot that that because I'm so far removed from part one, because again, you know, it's been so long. Since I had because I recently just rewatched part one to yeah. do this. And I was just like, because I'm on, I'm all the way over in part five now, you know, years and years beyond this. I'm like, I forgot mm. that this is how this started. And it's, it's just, amazing. It's a, <laughs> it's it's so unique in the fact that how much Araki has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, but not also, but also has not changed because again, yeah. the basic structure of JoJo's has always been the same, which is great. But I do like how they lean more into the eps. It's it's always been absurd. It's always been mm -hmm. like just in your face about like un unapologetically in your face about stupid fucking shit and cool moves, and that's what and makes you it mentioned, so fun. And you mentioned like the horror aspect. That's one of the things that like also stand about JoJo. So. The way its arcs are are divided to parts, and each part is quote unquote self contained because it has its own cast of characters, its own themes going on, and it's also its own genres, which is insane. Like, because part one is Victorian horror, you know, you got all these like the aesthetic, and you have the actual like body horror and like a lot of gory stuff, and then you get to part three, which is like uh, like around the earth in eighty days or whatever, and then part four is Scooby Doo. And each part can be so different from each other and and still like be so cohesive to be like it's JoJo, you know. It's Scooby Doo. Right. It's Am I wrong? Tell me what yeah, I'm telling you. You're lies. not wrong. It it actually is. Every uh every part is so vastly different like that. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, part two is like Indiana Jones. Yeah. Oh yeah. it is exactly is. He's an archaeologist. It is. Is it, yeah, and then well, yeah, technically, three, technically, like, uh, Jonathan is an archaeologist. Just saying, but uh, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, but jo Joseph, oh, Joseph, oh, Terry, jo Joseph becomes a real Stacking estate agent. <laughs> Alex, how did you get into uh, JoJo's? I got into mostly through the memes of Part Three, uh, but also back in the early days of the podcast, Riker was the one that really got me into JoJo's because mm. he was a huge fan. Um, back, back then, like, I think it was like the second year we were doing our podcast. I think we did a, like a Jojo spoiler cast, but we did the entire series anime series up to that point, which I think was up to part four. four. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and we did it, it all was. in like an hour and a half. It was a lot. It's of not cover. very good. So before jumping into this adaptation, this 2012 adaptation by David Production, which is like, we have, Wait, it's Natalia. incredible. It's awesome. Mm. Real quick. How did you get into it? Through the memes. I just, when I got into anime, that was around 2015. And that's when Jojo really started to blow up with mm -hmm. uh, part three. Yeah, I feel like and a lot of people got introduced everywhere. to Jojo because the memes are so, yeah. they're everywhere. The memes, and, 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 that and there's was like so many that, references to yeah. Jojo's in you know, the everywhere. actual animes right <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's crazy how you go back to because again 2015 that time was like when i it feels like for me at least felt like everything was blowing up like more and more whoa look at this so the memes are everywhere and like i saw some like the crazy ops like oh that, this show looks fucking weird people yeah, like it i'll give it a shot it's funny so this the adaptation that david production did came out in 2012 2012 yeah. Or at least the first season, which encompasses parts one and two, which is the same around the same time that something like Attack on Titan had come out, and anime yeah. was starting to get is big. It really? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. When Attack on Titan first came out. Yeah. Well, twenty thirteen was Attack, Attack on Titan, on Titan, Titan but out. it's around the same time. And then part three, it was two seasons. So that first season of part three was twenty fourteen, and then the second season was twenty fifteen. I always wonder if, if, if this if this adaptation, even even if it was done by the exact same team, if it had come out. 10 years earlier, I wonder if it would have been anywhere near as big. So that's I a crazy thing. I wonder if it would have been even like, bigger. God, I don't think so. You, so. So JoJo always had like a big presence, especially in Europe, but in the West, it was very hard for it to like break out and be like a major hit. Like, so you had uh, back in the 90s, you had this like, I think three episode OVAs for part three, which mm -hmm. some people, but it was very like cold following esque. Like, it wasn't that well known. Let me tell you and something. Then, the English dub for that is just the room levels of cringe. It's incredible. <laughs> and um, and even so, and even like more like uh, adaptations would like you would have a, the PS2 games for Part Five that some people would know, and some people have vague memories of a 2D fighting game by Capcom, 
that is about Jojo. It's like, oh, what is this fucking weird characters and stuff? That's strange. Um, but hmm. the Jojo never broke out too much until the 2012 adaptation. Yeah. Um, it's why I always really wonder neat. if it had come out in mid 2000s, like 2005, mm -hmm. 2006, I don't think it would be near <clears> as popular <throat> as it became. So I, I do want to unfortunately about... agree with that. I think uh, the popularity the... and the memes were. It just... was the right. It was the right studio at the right place at the right time for the adaptation. The internet, yep. I think, helped JoJo in massive way. Yes, definitely. One hundred. Like no other show, like breathed memes like JoJo because it's such a fucking weird show, you know. <clears throat> and those years, I would argue, was the golden age of memes. So, just to speed through just a, something really small that I think is fucking cool. So, this is the first adaptation that was made for part, part one back in 2007. Um, uh, Studio APPP and eh. produced, a, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, uh, produced a, a, a feature length movie that was uh, released in theaters. There was a lot of conspiracies about that Araki hated the movie or it was a bomb or what. None of that was ever confirmed, so we don't really know much about like what the fuck happened with this movie. But is this what you linked that YouTube yes. video? This is what I linked. Okay. So, right. so there is a trailer for it out on YouTube, and there's a 15 minute video that's basically like some scenes from the beginning of the movie spliced with storyboards that someone got a hold of and uploaded. So, we because this movie is lost media, it was released in theaters, but it was no home video release. So there's really like no way to get a hold of it. And apparently movie, a it's vast cool. majority of the film reels were completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that of honestly weird. a shame. <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of like there's a lot of like misinformation about this movie. We just don't know much about it. Um, but it is really cool to see it. And two cool facts about it. So whoever was supposed to voice Dio, oh, he did voice him, is Hikaru Midorikawa. Which you guys might know as the voice of Gridman. Yeah. And the voice of Sakamoto from Haven't You Heard of Sakamoto? Cool. Cool. Um, Coolest. Which is kind of crazy. And the guy who voices Jonathan is Katsuyuki Konishi, who voices Tengen Uzui from Demon Slayer, the flashiest of uh, Hashira. And he voices a lot of Pokemon, apparently. And he voices one more character, which I, I implore you guys not to look up. Because later on, he'll come back, and it's kind of crazy to think about. Okay. Um, I'll just leave that as a... A little dangling story. carrot. So that so that movie, like, didn't take off. There was a whole, like, plan for it to keep going as a series of movies, but, again, that didn't work. And then in 2011, uh, David Production approached and talking about and creating the adaptation, and they, their mentality... From the get-go was to be as faithful as possible to the source material because at that point people would be like oh this manga is unadaptable it's it's too like the poses are too crazy the line work is too insane but they're like we'll be as faithful as possible to the source material and um and here we are so apparently it worked and around 2011 uh, the production for the first three parts were greenlit at the same time so the roadmap was laid part one then part two and part three which we will get to eventually. Um, so released in 2012. Part one was directed by a Naokatsu Tsuda and Kenichi Suzuki. The character designs were done by Shimizu Takao, Takako, and the music was composed by Hayato Matsuo, which I kind of, just in quick general, because um, I know as we go along in the parts, I know music is a big, it's a major factor in JoJo's. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, what did you guys th think about the soundtrack? Not necessarily the OPs and EDs. We'll get to them in a bit, but the soundtrack itself. I, I thought I, the uh, hold soundtrack. on. This, this might be this might be a hot take, but Jonathan's theme is probably my second favorite main JoJo theme. Really? Ooh. I, yeah, pro I mean, yeah. Jorno's is my favorite, but yeah, Jonathan's, obviously. <laughs> Jonathan's is I, I like that the horns that come in. Da -da 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 I love it when it comes in like this. It's so cool. It's very heroic sounding. I can see that. It's a very Jonathan thing. It's very Jonathan. It very like when I hear that, I think, yeah, that's Jonathan Joe Storm. Honestly, for me, um, the soundtrack for part one, I thought it was 
okay at best. I I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It wasn't I hated it, but I was like, yeah, standard. I felt the same way. Uh mainly because after you get to part four, you're just like, yo, the music though. Yeah, it music, really kicks yeah. up. <laughs> like the rest of the parts have way better music than part one. However, part one, again, my, my biggest issue with part one has always just been the story, just how nonsensical it is. Because it's it's hard to tell people well, JoJo's we're about is music, really not good. story. I know, but it's hard to tell people how good JoJo's is, and then I I get them to watch part one, and they're like, they watch the first. Like, two what episodes. the fuck is this? Exactly, yeah, and it's like, okay, just trust, bro. Just trust the process. You have to watch it. It gets better, I promise. There's world <laughs> like, building wait. going on. Just trust me on this. It's but. crazy though how like because you say that, but I think one of the biggest things that drew me in with from the get go were the OPs. And this series mm. is known for legendary really? OPs. Oh, and yeah. I think this that one, first, first is one, just... is one of the best OPs they've done. It's um, so good they go back to it in part six. <laughs> spoilers. Um, so yeah, Jojo Son Chino Salome by uh, Hiroki Tomi Tominga. I think this OP is incredible. Like, I can sit here for 30 minutes dissecting it because there's so much that goes into it. Um, but this wasn't made by David Production. This is done by Kamikaze Doga. Which is a different studio who specializes in uh, 3D animation. Yeah, they yeah. did oh. uh, Ninja Batman. Uh, they did that yep. episode of uh, a couple of episodes on Star Wars, uh, whatever that thing was, the Disney Star Wars thing. Uh, Visions. Visions. They also did a uh, uh, Pop Team Epic. Mm -hmm. Did they do Pop Team Epic? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, that was them. Oh my yeah. God. Also, okay. fun fact: I got to meet the guy who directed <laughs> the uh, OPs that Kami Kamidoga did, uh, or Ka Kami Doga did. Uh, Kami Kamidoga. With... Kamika, yeah, that. Thank you. Uh, did with JoJo's at Otakon a couple of years ago. It's pretty cool. That's dude. crazy. Yeah, this OP is insane. Uh, I love it so much. I love the energy it has. Also, it's it's. I think it sets the tone super well to how dramatic and over the top part one is and JoJo in general. You know, it kind of gets you in the mood and be like, this kind of shit is wild. You know. Um, I, I feel like it's like an incredible tone setter. And, and it also sets the tone for uh, the sound effects that come in near the end of the parts with Definitely. OPs. Oh, that's very true. And yeah. The ED is also something to take note of because it set the tone that for the rest of the series, all EDs are basically Western uh, music picked by Araki, and then like the studio did something with it. I mean, also like the. <laughs> The memes that spawn and the memes. from freaking roundabout, dude. <laughs> to be oh, continued okay. memes. Oh, Literally, they, they are still the ongoing memes. to this day. Yeah, which is wild to me. It's weird it's that JoJo's is one of the few examples of an anime where the EDs are almost as iconic as the OPs. Definitely, I think roundabout will forever be the most iconic one, but it's I it's. It's cool the the sort of like the, the lineage of the EDs themselves with I each part. How I don't know, evolves. man. Part four Z D. It's fucking amazing. No, it's, <laughs> fucking it amazing. Is amazing. It is we'll amazing. There, but I think the recognizability of part one Z D is just out there. Yeah. If part four had all star, maybe it would have made it, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> that was a rumor for so long, too, that it was gonna be the E D song. It's it's cool how that's sort of a way for Rocky to incorporate himself to the production in terms of to work with them specifically on the EDs because he picked the songs if I'm not mistaken for all the EDs and then that sort of like gave the um, at least he was partnered with the studio about picking the song. Let's be um, honest, if cool. if money were no option, there probably would have been a Prince song as the ED for Part Four. Oh, I bet. But yeah. Prince's music is so legendarily expensive to license. Yep. So, and again, music is such a major factor with JoJo with all the references, but we'll get into. So that's all the technical stuff out of the way. Um, so what actually happened in part one in Fent the Blood? Uh, so there's the, the, not the a thing lot, with, really. <laughs> not a lot, but the thing with part one, it's structured in a way where there's like three sections to it, really. There's like the first three episodes, which by themselves are like sort of a complete story. And then you get to the next four episodes, which is kind of a slog, if I'm being honest. Then the ending, like the climax, is like is super memorable. But the first three episodes are like, I I love how there's such a such a 
there's like a cringe curve you need to go through when you watch it for the first time. What I mean by that is like, they're so dramatic. It's so like, everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe he he kissed that girl. Oh no. It's like, everyone is so So dramatic about everything. I wonder if that's like a relic of its time where like, it reads reads very like speed racer-esque where it's like, thing happens and now everyone needs to react. But again, that is shonen. It's very old school shonen that way. Yeah, it's very, but again, that is part of the structure that makes JoJo so good, though, and how Araki makes it um, way better. And work. Work. Yeah. It, it, just, it just works. It just works. It just works. <laughs> and the stylist. I think, but how does King Crimson work? <laughs> Sorry. Listen, I King can't. King Crimson is bullshit. <laughs> so I, I think it's funny that you think the middle part is the slog, because I think the slog is the first three episodes. <laughs> Seriously? I really do. Uh, Because I think the middle part I actually like because I'm like, hey, this is the traditional shonen that I've grown to know and love. (laughs) Because it's very traditional shonen in the the middle. So I understand why people, like, you would call it a slog because it's like, you know, what's this about? It's Oh, it's about the the this guy who discovers that he he truly has the strongest of all hearts and he is going to win through the sheer power of friendship and love. It's it's interesting because the first three episodes, so it's uh, so it's basically focusing about about Jojo and Dio's like growing up together and yeah, that like, whole shenanigans. Who's, and it's uh, very Dario driven. Brando and Dio Brando and like why is this comically evil guy like even here? <laughs> Speaking of, so Dio Dio Brando reference to to actual Dio Holy Diver, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. You, Holy Diver, you're the it's, it's funny to me that they had every opportunity in part three to use Dio's Egypt. As the ED song, and they didn't. But they didn't do it. <laughs> so also, his last name is a reference to Marlon Brando. That's right. So we are introduced to first of all, we're introduced to this fucking so dirty Dario Brando, the drunken old man. He's like scavenging around in like 1868, and he finds this like carriage getting thrown after an accident, get thrown off a cliff. And he finds the most, the densest fucker ever, George Joestar. And he's like, oh, let's fucking grab this, his money, or whatever. And then he wakes up and he's like, oh, no. It's like, thank you for saving me. It's like, of course, whatever. He basically owes his life to Dario, apparently. And then we're introduced years later to his son, Dio, the most fabulous fucker ever. And I love how Araki is like, how do we get people to hate this guy? Oh, he kicks a dog in the face. First time we see him, and he like, does a little more than kick that dog. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> he just served him a hot dog. It doesn't matter, bro. Ah, that relationship though between jo- Jojo and Jonathan and Dio, it's like the crux of part one. I think that's why the beginning of the ending of part one works so well for me because it's literally just that, like the relationship between the two. Because I know you, you so. John, you said that part one is very hard to get into, but I think the human drama at the core of it is still very compelling, even though it's covered, you know, like the weirdness of JoJo, because, you know, you have these, like, yeah, it's with lighting like, and the colors change. The human change. drama is the most compelling part of it, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> part one is like the, was it a litmus test? Is that the word? Of, is that yes. the phrase I'm thinking of? Yeah. Where, yeah. like, if you don't like part one, you're not going to like JoJo's, bro. If, if you can't get over no. part one, you, you might not like JoJo's. Because uh, JoJo is this that. weird, like, because it's, it it's so weird. It's so weird, dude. Because you get through, all right, first one to three, it's like, okay, this is back. This is story set up. This is like, it's weird, like, that this comically evil dude is so comically evil. Like right. he's like Jojo, I'm gonna turn you into an empty husk of a person. <laughs> it's like what? I'm gonna infiltrate and be the perfect son, and then I'll take everything from you. And it's like why? why and it works. So I love how his father is so disproving Dio. of him. His dad is like uh, Jojo. Why do you why do you use your fork like this? You don't get any like dinner for now, Jojo. Look at Dio. He is well mannered. He is the <laughs> ideal perfect son. And it's like. Dude, what? Like, what is this story about, right? And then, then you get past it, so you think, oh, it's a human drama thing, and then the football thing happens, and then it's like, oh, Dio hasn't really changed. That rugby scene is amazing, by the <laughs> way. That rugby scene is incredible. And it's like, 
you think it's originally you start off like that, right? You're like, okay, it's just some random weird thing that's happening, and there's like Jack the Ripper and all this other crap comes in later. But it's it it, Jack it the has Ripper nothing comes out of a dead horse in episode three. That's incredible. <laughs> is that episode three? That doesn't happen in episode three. Yes, oh, it is. I think it was. It yeah. doesn't matter, it's John. It doesn't four. matter what episode it happens in. It happens. That's the, that's the, <laughs> oh, that's oh, the crux of oh, the Oh, wait. It might be here. episode four. My bad. It might yeah, be I was like, four. I swear that was in episode four. <laughs> that was episode four. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the big deal here, John. The big deal is Jack the Ripper <laughs> comes out of a dead horse. <laughs> I guess. It's incredible. But, uh, Kurosaki Jack. Anyway. So we end off in episode three with like, okay, we've finally we've exposed Dio for being an evil piece of shit. He's been trying to poison um George. He's been poisoning George this entire time, just like how he poisoned his yeah. father. And he's gonna take the wealth of this Joe Star family for himself. And um And then the fucking fight that they have in the mansion as it's like crumbling down and it's so and and like I love how because and that's like almost a blueprint for what's to come, how like they try and keep outsmarting each other. It's like Joseph Jonathan is like, oh, okay, I got away with him. And then and then Dio is like, No, you don't. And like he keeps <laughs> like outwitting him. And that's like that's like basic JoJo fights down the line where it's like outsmarting each other over and over. It's very like primitive right. and very basic right now. But you can see like the sparks of what it's it very, will become uh... later. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> It's very Princess Bride esque, where it's like, yes. I knew you would choose that, so I chose this because you knew would choose that. And it's like, dude, dude, I still need to watch that. Oh, it's, it's a great movie. movie. <gasps> you didn't watch Princess Bride? It's a phenomenal movie. Princess Bride. Incredible. What kind of nerd movie. are you? Not have seen Princess Bride. Anyway, it, it's on so, the movie list. I reject my humanity, Chinoda. And then the freaking stone mask finally comes into play. And we're like, after okay, what teasing is it? for like three episodes. Yeah, which which they've been teasing since the beginning because it's like, what is this yeah. weird mask that Dario's mm-hmm. like? Yeah, fuck it, it's just a stone mask. Who cares? Kick it away. And like, and that apparently, everyone triggers this the Dio's transformation into a vampire. Yeah, because he, let's see, I remember John. So he's was, trying to activate the mask through. Yeah, like, Jonathan killing, was working uh, Jonathan. like researching it because he's like, oh, this is the thing. My mother had this, and I never met my mother because she died when I was little. So this is yeah. the only thing I have of her. So I need to investigate this. It's like, okay, but why? <laughs> no, but investigate it because he because in the first part, in the first episode, when they fight each other and he punches Dio, a little of his blood like spills on the, the mask and it like triggers. Yeah. So yeah, like he's just... serious about it, so he's investigated it further. Yeah, but it's like, why did she have this mask? What is this mask's significance? Like it's we part no so you think it's supposed to be some like again, it, it's a murder mystery thing. It's like, okay. But it's like, nah, we're not going to do any of that. Like, it, actually, they do have mystery kind of. They're going into a little bit. A little. Well, <laughs> but it's not the mystery. The that you, it's not a traditional, like, whodunit is what I'm saying. No, it's not. Like, you have mystery, like, elements about, like, you know, to be like, okay, what's up with that? But the crux of the story is Jojo and Dio. And that nothing ever takes away from that. Aside from, like, the three episode in the middle of the part, which are like, let's fight these random knights that don't really matter a whole lot. Um, you know, I actually which... see that's the thing. I, I like that part because, like, when he fights, um, Blue Bufford, Buford, Buford. Buford. yeah, Buford. yeah. So, when he fights Blueford, and um, he oh, we forgot we totally skipped the best part of uh, episode uh, four, the Zeppelin. wagon. <laughs> No, what do you mean, Zeppeli, bro? Oh yeah. Oh right, Zeppeli. <laughs> but we did skip we Speedwagon. Gonna, Wagon. That's also true. We are not gonna skip Speedwagon. No, no. He means one of the um the the man who makes JoJo's possible in the first place. All the events of JoJo's possible in the first place. Robert Edward the- Oliver Speedwagon. <laughs> Ario Speedwagon. Captain, oh my captain. The best, the best wingman ever. The eternal virgin. <laughs> Oh, would <laughs> so I love how he like, wins, how Judge Jonathan wins his heart over. Where it's like, he's like, No, I'm not gonna hurt this man, he has a family. And then Spigo is like, This man is a true gentleman, <laughs> I can't hurt him. You had every opportunity to, to kill me with that kick, but you didn't. Why? <laughs> Can I just say <laughs> though, he Speedwagon is introduced with that hat that comes off and <laughs> does like the little blades and stuff, and he never comes you back, never again. see it ever again. <laughs> 
incredible. Such a cool hat, though. It is a cool hat. It's like kind of like replaced by a better hat. What's that dude? Uh, is it Odd Job in Bond that has yeah, a hat that yeah, does that it's zoom? Odd Job. Yeah, the bowling hat that he throws. Yeah. So yeah, pretty. What else? And I love how Speedwagon becomes this character who's just to, like whenever there's a fight, he's just to the side. Oh my god, he's so incredible! How is he using this technique? He's, <laughs> yeah, just, no, like, he's the commentary guy. dude yeah. from Shonen. Yeah. yeah, he's a traditional commentary dude. He's the bench. <laughs> he is flavor he's flame. The bench. <laughs> but it's so but funny. yeah. So, every every so, single so after, time like, uh, Speedwagon reacts is so fucking funny. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, Mr. Joe Star! I love that meme of him like staring through the yeah. door and it's like it's <laughs> someone put it made a, a meme with it where it's like he walks in on him and Arena having sex and he's like, Oh, what a fantastic technique, Mr. Joe Star. <laughs> <laughs> so oh so after that fight with Dio, that first like climactic fight that pretty much ends the first section of the story. So we do meet Zeppeli and we introduced to the unique magic thing of Jojo for this now, which is Haman, which you mean bullshit, preceded please. some bullshit. Oh? <laughs> you mean bullshit. It's not Haman bullshit. It's a breathing technique before uh -huh. Demon Slayer. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is what inspired <laughs> Demon Slayer, actually, guys. Like, actually, the it's the same thing. It's breathing. It's just breathing, which I love the demonstration where it's like, it's like, oh, you can through breathing you can you can control your body and your environment and he punches the frog and <laughs> yeah. the stone be beneath the frog breaks but it doesn't break I love the that frog. section so stupid and i love it that that's it's pure jojo it, it's and so, again haman is so fucking stupid bro it's like but, but haman cool thing... is about it flows through your blood mm -hmm. it's part of a breathing technique it harnesses the power of the goddamn sun uh, but, but they commit can't... to it but they you commit can't, to how much but you can't they commit use it to like the science behind it. Apparently, you can't use it for destruction, yet it can break stone, but it can't do anything against metal. And like, what does that mean? I don't understand. Is metal not just refined stone? Yes. That, <laughs> how does it how does metal not conduct? And if, if they metal haven't did refined not, their technique yet, no, John. If, if metal did not conduct Hamon, how did he use the sword? Huh, Natai? How did he put Hamon in the goddamn sword? Because it's pluck and luck. That's the whole... He used the what is pluck? The... What is pluck? <laughs> so, oh what, so, so pretty much we have this like whole training session with Zephyli and like they, they drew the concept of Hamon, which like it's kind of cool how much they commit to it with the science-y aspects of it. It's like, wow, he makes his body temperature flow more so he's hotter and then his effects more... It's kind of, I, I think it's really funny and ridiculous. But then, right after that, they hear spottings of Dio. He's just still alive. In, um, Dio? In, in a, a, a fucking uh, um, Midnight Slot. This fucking cursed place. And this section of the story is like four episodes in this location. And there's not a whole lot of story, but there are fights. So as we talk about when would they get there, they meet these two knights, uh, Brufford and um, um, fuck the other guy's name. Um, Ar I'll look Ar it up. Uh, Tarkus. I, 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 Tarkus. Yeah. Tarkus, 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 yeah. And you can see that Araki is trying to like make more interesting scenarios. Like, oh no, his his ability is like breathing. What does he do underwater? And it's like. Sure, like you can see, is still like trying to well, figure out. Well, his... used to be a, a, it's a collapsed coal mine, so the floor collapsed. There's trapped air underneath. There's trapped air underneath, <laughs> which he is opens like... it up and breathes the air from underneath the water. <laughs> Freaking starts his hormone. Like what? And you can see, like he's trying to figure out, like his how how to write compelling fights, and he's trying, which is whatever. But so you do have Bless the fight. His heart. Where... <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. So and after the fight with Tarkus, then they move on to this like temple with Brufford, and they they introduce like Zeppi like, oh, this is the place where I die. Ding, no, ding, no, no, that was ding, with Tarkus. Bluford is uh, is the uh, Bluford is the guy with the hair. Yes, yes. Bluford's the my hair bad. Guy. I I'm a fake JoJo fan. I missed fake JoJo fan, bro. Like, come on. It's it is cool how they try to give the uh, both the both the knights like. The backstory of how they used to serve the queen, but then they like were executed. It's like, 
Well, I, I, I really I liked fun. the Blueford fight because after Jonathan eventually hits him with Hamon and stops him from being a zombie, uh, mm-hmm. then he re- regains his humanity. And then it's like it shows what a, in typical Iraqi fashion, it's come full circle now with Jonathan, yeah. like at the beginning, not being a gentleman and trying to figure out what it means to be a gentleman. And as it turns out, being a gentleman just means to be a, a caring guy and means to keep your word. And it's yeah. like. He didn't want to strike Blueford once he realized Blueford had a um, his humanity back. He's like, I don't need to fight you anymore. Oh, he didn't cat. reject his humanity anymore. Yeah, he didn't. Re- <laughs> my cat was attacking the screen. Sorry. Let her that. attack. Let her be. No. She was do not falling at your face, Chinoda. I, I love how all of you are you. mispronouncing his name. By the way, it's Bruford, not Blueford. I said Bruford. I it was Bruford. No, B R U F O R D. Bruford. <laughs> No, it was subtitled as Blueford in, on Crunchyroll. I rewatched I'm it on Crunchyroll. looking at Mal right now. Oh, my God. Bruffer. It's Bruford. 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 Um, after a Bruford fight, we move on to the Tarkus fight in the temple where Zeppeli claims his, like, end is nigh. And they introduce this, like, this this mechanism of the chain where both Tarkus and Jonathan have this, like, chain wrapped around their necks and, like, using the weight is like and again interesting scenario for this like section because it's like oh his power is breathing and then i will say by this point like they choose the character of poco and he sucks <laughs> <laughs> who is poco just a kid a kid he's that was just a kid he's he's a kid who's looking for his hot sister he's awful and it's totally not incestuous we promise guys Promise. It's, <laughs> no, it's not, not. Um, and again, that fight like this, and and that fight leads to something that I, I really want to talk to because death is like a major thing in JoJo, and yeah. it's funny going back to part one and seeing the death scenes being written so kind of cli- in a cliche way. Yeah, like no, the people characters- just get bodied literally. Like, Mister Police Officer, get down! Freaking head gets scooped off. <laughs> No, like not even wall. that matter. In the, in, so when a main character dies, like it's like the Hollywood classic, like, oh, they get to say their last words. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They die and they close their eyes. So both with his dad and with um uh Zeppelin when they die, they have this like even Zeppelin where it's like his body is torn in tr- He's torn literally together. In half, He's like missing one arm. But let me tell you about how I knew about this prophecy. <laughs> so, <laughs> interesting. I think this is a very good point to look at in Iraqi's writing in terms of when he was figuring things out and how he Definitely. wanted to do things. And Jojo deaths as the as what we know now versus back then, aka part one, you can see the difference through watching this. Definitely. It's also it's don't get really don't cool. get used to characters having a chance to say anything in their last words as you go through JoJo's. <laughs> one of the get cool things about characters that live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's cool seeing how he progresses as both like in his art and his writing and like I think looking at the death scenes because they're so impactful in these stories. So like go looking at them compared to part one as well. It's like oh man, like you can tell how he's like very he's figuring out his style, but he's like also learning as he goes and like continually improving and and more. Um, but yeah, that so once we get after the Tarkus fight. We start meeting more useless side characters, which again, it, it's funny how like right near the end. So after the fight, they basically like, oh, Dio is in this like castle and he's building his zombie army and he's gonna conquer the world and we have to stop him. And we Can meet all say, these like the, the writing that they have for Dio is phenomenal because mm-hmm. in typical like super villain fashion he's like ha, i'm gonna leave my servants to finish you off uh jojo i'm not even gonna supervise anymore and he just leaves even though he's like this all-powerful being that could quite literally could just and he knows like jojo's power is literally the more he gets beat down the stronger he comes back and he he acknowledges that when he's still human and yet now that he's a vampire and he's he's transcended humanity because he's rejected his humanity right He's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm way above this. I'll let my servants take care of it, and he just leaves. And he's just so comically evil <laughs> about the being like, yeah. And they just- get bodied in the meantime, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and obviously they're gonna die because he's they got to die to the main character. But it also falls into line with like um with his whole facade, you know, the whole thing that um 
Speedwagon talks about. It's like when he meets yeah. when he meets Deal for the first time, he's like, "Don't fall for it, Mister Joe Star. He's uh he's evil. He's the most evil man I've ever met in my life. He's like I deal with scumbags all the time. And it's like <laughs> yeah, because Deal is that. And it's awesome that Speedwagon can see that." And uh, I love how it comes full circle later on with Dio and like the whole false facade. Because while uh, while JoJo is fighting or while Jonathan is fighting uh, Tarkus and Brufford, uh, Dio is just up in his castle, just being like comically fucking evil again, super mega evil. Like, like yeah, just like killing people. Like yeah, it's like there's that there's that, mom, there's that there's that mother who has her child and she's like, please spare my child. He's like, oh, I'm offering you immortality. <laughs> You and your child could live forever and join me as long as I would never force you to the, have this decision. And then she's like, just pro promise me you won't hurt my child. He's like, fine. I'll promise me and my retinue will not hurt your child. And he turns her <laughs> into a vampire and then she rips the throat out of her kid. And it's like, yo, what? Yeah, and then he, and then he says, he, and then he's like, he, it's almost like he turns to the camera and says, see, I told you I wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like he he tries. He's so so freaking evil, man. God. Shout outs to so shout outs to Takeido Koyasu, the voice actor, because I this is like his most iconic role ever, and his performance of Dio is it's, insane. It, it's so like, iconic. He is so iconic. We never even say his name. We just say Dio when we yeah, talk Dio. About he's, he's, he's always what, Dio he's recognized as. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's incredible how much like personality he has, and it's funny how. We have all these like small moments in part one that then later on become like the memes. Like the first time he becomes a veteran, jumps to a scene, it's like goes, <laughs> it's very, very, it's like, it's like he does the thing. He, even, then, he uh, doesn't even start that though. The the guy that he meets at the port goes re first. That's true. That's, <laughs> but yeah. then, then one of my favorite parts where he, he, he does the Muda 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 first for the first yeah, time. The Muda Muda Muda! It's incredible. <laughs> Hinjaki, Hinjaki. His performance is incredible in this part. Um, so the the gang meets a few of the uh, of the mentors. Where we meet, I'm just gonna give a quick shout out to Dire and Straits because it's named after <laughs> one of my favorite Straits. band, Dire Straits. <laughs> dire Straits is a phenomenal, oh it's band. a phenomenal band, and, and they do how, nothing. <laughs> I love that Dire. He exists for like what one episode, right? Yeah, one episode or two. Full episode. I don't think he gets, he doesn't live the full episode. But one of the my favorite meme from part one is has always been like, "You fell for it, you fool!" <laughs> then they're gonna attack. I love that. That was one of the memes that I was like, "This is so fucking funny." <laughs> like, what? you fell for it, you fool! And for those who don't know, behind the scenes, John quotes this a lot, <laughs> all the time. It's one of my favorite JoJo. Thundercross memes. split attack is incredible. I love that. <laughs> Almost as iconic as Sunlight the Yellow Overdrive. Oh god, all the freaking overdrive skills. But no, like I remember who I don't was it was it Speedwagon that made the comment about my god, Thundercross Thundercross split attack. He's defending attacking. It yeah, quite it's quite literally Speedwagon the ultimate yeah, ability. <laughs> and then and then Dio's like he just splits him open. Like, no. <laughs> oh my god. That that's that's the most memorable part of that fight. It's like it's so ridiculous how he goes like that. Yeah. But it, I was so disappointed for like the ridiculous absurdity of JoJo's. Like you thought the first beginning was stupid and crazy. No, <laughs> it gets more crazy and stupid. I love how he uses the roses as well. It, like he, <laughs> when he rips his head, then his head just falls on the his bed head of falls roses. Off, but then he still can use the concentrated power of Hamon and spits the rose into Dio's eye. <laughs> <laughs> roses are a living thing, so they contain Hamon. And they can they has residual Hamon. Like, okay. <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. And I, I love how how does Dio at this point even know like when he first meets uh Zeppelli? when they're when he summons the servants right he talks about how yeah. he knows hamon and he can just like oh i can just lower your body temperature so hamon is powered by blood and i can lower your body temperature so your blood doesn't flow so you can't circulate hamon so i can just body you that way because i have perfect mastery over my vampiric powers that apparently control body temperature i guess <laughs> how, how does he, he know about that how, how did he know about any of this prior to the, to Zapelli showing up because as far as we know this is the first time Zapelli and Dio have ever met 
because Zapelli's like, I've been hunting. And how did how did Zapelli even know about Dio? He's like, I know about the the master of the or the uh, servant of the stone mask. Because he, like, he knew because he knew about the the fucking he knew about the uh, the uh, Chinese the doctor was also a vampire. Was, and he oh, supplied he, the poison to Dio. Was he always a vampire? I thought Dio turned yeah. him. Oh yeah, he was God. a vampire. And oh his, do you remember God. his name, Natai? Wang. Wang. No. Wang, Wang Chung. <laughs> Wang, Wang Chung. Chung. Yeah. Wang Chung. Phenomenal. And so and then we reach the, 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 the main event. And so it's Jojo versus Dio for the final time, supposedly, part one. Um. And again, we see those seeds of like <clears throat> what comes later with Jojo, where like he's fighting, he's piercing with the sword. It's like, ah, oh, I got you, I froze your hands, but oh no, he put the sword in the fire to put warm the, the sword fire, up. So, yeah. in, so, it, so, it, so he's like, oh, it's it's melting faster than I can freeze the sword. And again, I ask you, how the fuck does Hamon work in a sword? Because as far as Dude, we don't know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Rule of cool. Metal. Rule of Hamon fucking is not cool. supposed to go through metal, bro. Because he's he's put the P on luck, so it's pluck. Oh so it's working now. John, <laughs> rule of cool. Just go with it, bro. By so the way, John, you asked a question earlier about what does pluck even mean. It literally yes. means determined courage. Really? Yeah. yeah. Pluck is a word. A it means determined courage. I did yeah, not you've know never heard that. the word oh, like, okay. like a, he's a plucky guy. Oh, I did not know pluck was a real word. Okay. Yeah, that makes no, it's a, a real more thing. sense. I just thought it was so dope because I was like, when he was like, you can have my sword, luck, and I'll give you this. And he writes a letter. I'm like, what could you write on this that makes it a different word? <laughs> Pluck. And I'm like, what does that mean? Power luck? <laughs> That's what I thought Power originally. Luck. Power no, he's luck. Trying to, he's trying to tell him that he's so courageous that he can accomplish anything. That Okay, that makes a lot more sense. It still I'm doesn't explain how right Hamon now. was able to be transmitted into it because it's a fucking metal object, but okay. <laughs> so, wait, when did they say that, that Hamon can be conducted through metal? It can go through Which... metal. <clears throat> it so can. it can go through metal, but apparently it gets dispersed if it touches walls, but it can also go through walls and explode rock. And Zapelli couldn't destroy the steel door in the uh, in that battle chamber because it was made of metal. It was too a, thick. Non, no, because he, he said it was because it's inorganic. Because Hamon can only travel through organic things. So I'm just saying um... it, it doesn't make sense. How they explain Hamon and how it's supposed to work does not make sense. And then in all it's of part pluck. one, <laughs> yeah, because it's pluck. You have because to write pluck. off because you know I get it. I'm I'm asking for a lot of logic in a show about vampires. <laughs> <laughs> bro jack the reaper jumps out of a dead horse in episode four what are you talking about <laughs> i know I, i'm asking quite a lot i know but i just want it just didn't make any sense but you know it's, but again it's supposed to be like that it's supposed to be nonsensical it's not supposed to make sense it's supposed to just be fucking funny it's the it's, entertainment of the absurdity of everything yeah because yeah, yeah. Bro, like my favorite my favorite quote from part one is the uh is that moment when they so when they confront Dio for the last time? It's like it's like how many lives have you ended? How many people have you eaten? And it's like how oh, many yeah, loaves of like, bread have you eaten in your yeah, life? Yeah, no, no. He's like Dio. How many lives have you taken just to heal those scars? And he's like, how many pieces of bread have you eaten in your life? He's <laughs> and like, George was oh like, Dio. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what it's what is so your favorite quote from this part? That's, this goodbye, is Jojo. <laughs> yeah, I love goodbye, Jojo. <laughs> this will be a recurring question in this podcast. No, dude, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it has to be that. It has to yeah. be that. Oh, I love that one. For you, Chino, I just like the goodbye. No, it is that. Kono Dio Kono Dio da. Da. It was it me, has to Dio. Be that. I like, it's I so like the, fucking iconic. I like the goodbye Dio. Just had the, the glee in his voice when he goodbye, says Goodbye, Jojo. Goodbye, <laughs> Jojo. And I don't know why he just chose to use English then. <laughs> like, I don't. Prior to this, I don't think he used English at all. It's so, funny oh, it's like, like when Zeppeli. It's it's like when Zeppeli is like is like when they uh, fight Tarkin. It's like yeah, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, I understand that they're supposed to be... They're in England in the 1800s, right? In the 1860s, they're English 1880s. gentlemen. They're English gentlemen. So I understand that they're supposed to be speaking English this entire time. Which yeah. you don't 
obviously, you know, because I watch it in Japanese and it's like, because it's Japanese to me. Um, I am told that the English dub is pretty good in the new one, Alex, if, if I, I recall correctly. It's decent. The original English dub for this was not very good. Um, it was, they basically told everyone fake a British accent. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, that sounds bad. Oh, you got a cup of tea in it Tuesday. <laughs> Which is. I will say in certain parts, it makes it unintentionally funny. Like uh, the part where Dio steals the kiss from Arena, like his little henchmen that are always following around. is like, hey, he did it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they could never be as cool as Dio. <laughs> oh, shit. They have these like very That's... obvious fake Cockney accents. It's terrible. I mean, I will say shout out to, was it Patrick Sates, I think? Who Patrick dubs, Sites, uh, yeah, does uh, the voice yeah. of Dio. Yeah, and he's like, he does a good job, I think, as Dio, for the most part. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch is the voice of uh, Jonathan in the dub. It's yeah, one of his that... few roles that I'm like, mm, this is not very good, Johnny. <laughs> oh, no. It's kind of whatever. No. Um, are you planning on watching the, the dubs for future parts, Alex? Because now you watch some well, like no, sections I... of like doing doing the rewatches i'm probably just going to watch it in japanese i have watched english dubs of these before though mm, i see so to wrap this up so dia is defeated finally and then we get like the epilogue of part one where it's like everyone's living happily ever after jonathan and Aaron are getting married speedwagon still third wheel but whatever <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... he leaves the room to give them privacy because he understands the assignment that's what you think uh <laughs> And um, so, and then in, in like the final stretch is Erna and Jonathan going on like their like honeymoon, and um, I think it's a cruise to America. It's a cruise to America, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they talk about oh, she's pregnant, they're having a baby, and it's out of this and that. And these like these men are like carrying this coffin that's surprisingly like very heavy. And one of them is like, oh, I think I hear something. Then you just hear Dio go, please. please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, Dio's in there. It's like, psyched Dio's still alive. Uh, long story short, uh, he try, he he's planning on taking over Jonathan's body and then remaining immortal because he's now obsessed with Jonathan, gaining control. But it's like, no, I'll actually make you yeah, immortal. Yeah, he respects can, Jonathan. He respects so Jonathan. The one thing that he didn't do was respect anyone but himself because, you know, Dio's number one. But yeah. after being foiled, not just once, but twice now by by Jonathan, he's like, I respect you, Jojo. That That is why you are the pinnacle body that I want. It's like, ayo? <laughs> ayo? Suddenly it became very homoerotic. <laughs> John and I Hello. were talking about this, was it yesterday, where it's like, you know, we, we, we watch Jojos for the homosexual overtones. We tolerate the fact that the main Jojos are straight. We do tolerate that, but <laughs> except for Jolene, I think she's uh, never mind. <laughs> what she has a boyfriend, she had a boyfriend. bro, she's listen, fucking listen. bi as fuck. Listen, Come on, she gives off so much bi probably, energy, yeah, probably. Bro, I still haven't probably. watched part six, so no one say any spoilers. We'll get to it. How um, you... wait, what? Well, hold on, hold on. What do you mean you haven't watched part six yet? Uh, because it's on Netflix. You haven't watched Princess Bride, Shinoda. Don't shame him. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Shinoda, you have listen, shut the fuck up, Shinoda. You haven't seen Princess Bride. You can't shame John. <laughs> I'll eventually you know, I I watched because for me, how I watched JoJo's was I watched uh I saw obviously memes and stuff, and I I knew about part three. So then I watched part one, two, and three. And then like right. it was like a year after part four finished airing that I was like, okay, I'll finally go watch part four. And then it was like a year or so after part five finished airing that I was like, okay, I'll go watch part five. So we're coming up on a year, I believe, for part six. Or actually, we're past a year already. Almost so a year and a half. A year and a half. So I guess I should watch part six now <laughs> to follow my trend of, okay, now that the hype has died down, I'll go watch it. <laughs> and if, Bro, the, if the pattern hype, follows. There was no hype. <laughs> if, if the pattern Apparently, follows, there was no, no hype for part six, though. Everyone was disappointed. Netflix butchered it. They butchered it. We'll get to it. If 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 the so, pattern follows, though, Natai, uh, within the next year, we should get an uh, announcement about part seven. <laughs> Oh, Bro, yeah. I'm, I'm actually excited, my to, on that. I'm excited to, for part seven, though. You'll have to give us your prophecy. <laughs> oh, he's already had. I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll have to like to math it out, but we'll do that later, maybe. <laughs> um. So yeah. So basically, Dio confronts uh, Jonathan, 
there's a there's a scuffle like there and there are zombies on deck and i love how intense like this the this section gets like oh my god like what's actually gonna happen because people are dying left and right yeah there's a and, bunch of freaking zombies just yeah. running around the boat and just eating people and then and we Chun get is like chung wang chun whatever the, the china the chinaman's name is uh he, <laughs> he's like i followed your orders master deal i infected only one passenger and now by the time we get to america we'll have a whole army and it's like oh no what shall we ever do and then uh, the what, ship up. And then what happened? Like Jonathan like throws one of their bodies into like the the engine, so like it stops and it's about no, to, like... no. He so what Jonathan does is that he he gets attacked by Dio and it's like he can't breathe, so he can't use his hormone. But he f- gathers up the rest of his hormone that he could muster the up. The final hormone. The final hormone, and he like chops off uh the Chinese guy's head. And then f- somehow, after chopping his head off with the last of his hormone, was able to make him control his body to go grab yeah. the pistons or the engines to make it so the, the steam would build up and blow up so the ship blows up and all the freaking people die in it, I guess. And it's like, what? And in the chaos, Erin manages to save like, this baby as well. And Jonathan pretty much like has this, like, he's dying, and you realize, like, oh, there's no way out of this for him. It's like, he's actually gonna die? What? Yeah, I know, like, a and... main protagonist actually dying? Like, yeah. what? I haven't That's seen insane. that in a good while. When uh, when you're used to watching anime where it's so much happy-go-lucky or, like, yeah, the main he's character supposed always to get his comes happily out on ever top. After. Yeah. Like, he's in, he's literally in the middle of getting his happily ever after, and it's like, nope, he has to die. Psych! And you're just like, what? There's gotta be that something image, that saves him. such dude. a shock, yeah. That that image of him like holding Dio's head, it's like slowly is like dying. It's like then you see it's like oh, it's just a husk. Now it's uh, that that moment is so powerful when you actually get to it. It's like it makes watching the entire part worth it. But it me. also again everything comes full circle because uh, so we skipped over the thing about Dio like when he yeah when he finally gets damaged and is like actually about to die, he rips off the, his facade of like i'm a cool level-headed evil super villain and it's like nope you're just an evil piece of shit and he's just like he's unabashedly evil it's like that's full circle now and now we've yeah. come to the close for jonathan it's come full circle of like he's dying but he wants Arina to live be safe. And, and be safe and like <laughs> for whatever reason this this tomb or casket that Dio came in is now dynamite dynamite proof so we can save her Perfect. i guess perfect but uh but in traditional jonathan fashion as a true gentleman he saves the one that he loves and he saves has her live and save another child on top of that he holds dio in his arms as he's dying because it's like he is always his brother because he has always loved dio even though he hated dio and they fought he still loved him as his brother it's the traditional heroic sacrifice trope and i was just like god damn it jonathan you naive son of a bitch (laughs) god damn it man (laughs) It's 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 crazy how like it's interesting because there's this one quote that I wrote down for myself. So apparently it's from like the first volume of part one, where Araki says, uh, "Put simply, the theme of the work is living through the two main characters. I want to examine two ways of living. It's all about singing the hymn of the battle between human and non-human." And you could tell that like that's like the vision he had. Yeah, like the that's two- the main theme of it. Yeah. Yeah, a man who definitely. has um everything given to him but still rejects his humanity because he's he wants he believes himself to be a higher being and he's a non-human versus a true gentleman who truly believes in the power of humanity because that's something that I forget who's the one who asked him that. I think it was Bruford, right? Like you truly Either believe Either Bruford in or Tarkus. I no, it was Bruford, definitely it yeah, was Bruford. Bruford, yeah. When he's fighting uh Bruford at the end or towards the end of Bruford's fight, he he has some of the humanity. Stops the strike. Yeah. He's like, do you truly believe that much in humanity? He's like, I do. And it's like, oh. again, that's why I that's like a- the middle part. Because it, it sets up a lot of character for Jonathan himself and for a lot of the story to go forward. It's also for cool Jonathan. how like that theme of like the resolve of humanity is something you see throughout all of JoJo's. Yeah. Like to some extent more times than other, but like like that that main core of like humanity and like the the, the resolve of humanity. It's like a big aspect of JoJo. And it's cool that it's set up this early on. 
you know. Now, another thing, though, about JoJo's is, like, it's been unique to its own story so far, but it still is a shonen because we have the 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 master who shows up out of nowhere who can master stuff, who gives his final skill to the main protagonist guy who is also super powerful in it. Like, he, this man is overflowing with Hamon. He might be the strongest Hamon user of all. And it's, like, the heroic sacrifice at the end. Like, there's it, there's so many stereotypical shonen tropes inside of JoJo's part one, but it doesn't feel yeah. like that. Like you have to really cool think about it. Like it, it, it does exist in it. It is, it is stereotypical shonen, but it's presented not like a stereotypical shonen. It's actually. And awesome the crazy like thing is that the more we get into JoJo, we'll see more like things that we take for granted in shonen manga. But when you think about it, at the time it was like, it was like a, a Rocky doing something different from the rest of the pack. Yeah, that's one so, thing. Like that do whether it it's because... whether it's like Jonathan dying in the end of part one or. How he's gonna build on the cast for part two and then part three? Like we'll see how those like <laughs> ripple and like affect more and more manga cuts throughout the. Yeah, it's crazy how. Yeah, that's JoJo another like, one of the things that yeah. people like the people who for people who don't know like we said in the beginning, JoJo's is from the eighties, man. It's old. It is very old. Nineteen eighty six. For a story crazy. to tell this type of story, it was not done before. It was unheard of. So this is like another reason why a lot of people respect Araki's works. Because he's such a a, a trendsetter, not yeah, not he, much of a trendsetter, yeah, he but he's a, he's a mold breaker. Yes, yes. Yeah. actually, that's better. Yeah, bro, he literally created the first Yandere. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Did he actually? Did, yeah. did he yeah. actually yeah. in part four? Really? In part four, yeah. He was yeah. the first one. That's the first Yandere. Yeah. No way. He created yeah. her as like a sort of like trying to do a different type of female character and then suddenly everyone were doing that type of female character after <laughs> they're like it. holy shit he cooked he fucking cooked <laughs> I, I remember reading an interview that he did one time where he was actually talking about that and he said he wanted to create a female character that was essentially a stalker that people could actually like <laughs> So he's to blame for Yandere Dev. Yeah. Yes. Oh no. He's to blame. Yes. He's, to blame he, he's to blame for Mirai Nikki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. So yeah, that's the ending of Phantom Blood with Arena surviving with the baby and her own baby as well as the other baby. Um upon rewatching this, so what did you guys feel like going and rewatching this part of JoJo again? Like what was that experience like? So, Did you change your mind about the part? Was it like the same? Um, my complaints about the story are still the same. There's still so many nonsensical elements. And I can't forget, again, my first time watching through and being like, what the fuck is JoJo's about? Why do people like this? But, like I said, once you get past the first three episodes, then it starts... Because you get into the real meat of JoJo's at, at episode four. Or mm -hmm. episode four of part one. And that's like... but. This it's like it's hard for me to judge because it's like I watching it first time and I'm like okay this is the good stuff I didn't lead with this what was the point of the first three it didn't really make it didn't it wouldn't contribute too much if we cut the first three episodes into like two nah. yeah I know right I'm <laughs> I love the beginning but what it's like everything in JoJo's part one has the structure it has the structure of JoJo's in it and it, that has not changed and it's that nonsensical craziness that makes JoJo so good. In the way that it's presented, and um, I, I do think that the how Araki later turns he more towards comedy, and mm -hmm. like the comic relief stuff, on top of the whole crazy bullshit, makes it a lot better. I, I do mm. like that he went towards that route more so than the trying out the um like just the rest of part one. Drama. Like if the rest of yeah the rest of the drama, if the rest of JoJo's was just like part one, I don't think it'd be as good. As it is, because every part progressively gets a lot better, in my opinion. The evolution yeah. of this series is insane. Yeah. But yeah, what watching, about uh... Uh, watching my second playthrough, or rather, second is third playthrough. Third watch, watch playthrough. <laughs> watching it again on my rewatch, uh, I still have the same problems with that I originally had, which is like this is nonsensical. If you were not invested in JoJo's by the time you start part one, you might hate the sh the series, but. If you can get past the uh, you know, the first four episodes, I, 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 like it, it gets really good because there is a good story to be told in this. It's just that the way that Dio is presented as this nonsensical evil fucking person who does random bullshit. 
<laughs> like kissing Aaron. Like, that's the fun. <laughs> that's the but, fun. But like, yeah, that absurdity because there again, not not a lot of shows start off with this level of stupid, evil, absurdity shit. Like it's just insane to start a show off like this and have fans afterward. I feel like if it came out, if JoJo's never existed, if JoJo's did not become a um, see, the, and you know what? That's hard to say because JoJo's is so such a phenomenon that has kicked off so many other things. It's such a yeah. huge influence to pop culture. It's hard to say if we judge JoJo's if it came out today, would it be that unique? It would and be no they, Persona without JoJo, bro. Just I know, saying. and it's oh, that's true, and it's like it's true. hard to say because you're right. It's it's nonsensical, but it it is fun. That's the best part. It's fun. You have to get over that stupid like you. you there's an argument, early, like the there's an argument factor or whatever it was. What like there's that, What's that? earlier, Natalia. You're talking about like there's like that cringe of the JoJo's, cringe curve. Right? Yeah, the cringe, yeah, the yeah. cringe curve. You have to get over that cringe curve yeah. to really get into JoJo's. Because I know a couple of people who watch JoJo's like part one especially. They're like. This is not great. Like, it didn't make sense. It's over the top. It's silly and it's crazy. And I'm like, but that was the point. <laughs> That's the cool thing about that cringe curve, though. Like, just to finish that point, it's, I, I think it kind of leads to maybe unintentionally to the effect of like you slowly getting used to the, like the weirdness and the absurdity of like, this is so fucking stupid that by the time like the actual like emotional gut punch of the story kicks in, you don't even expect it, but you're so invested that it actually hits you. It's like, Oh no! I, I enjoy these characters. No, I, especially with, like with Jonathan, it's like so. You're sort of like, oh, it's just like Jojo, but it, that emotional punch is like hits you right in the face. It really does. Um, yeah. What about you, Alex? You were about to say something. I was you. You were talked about the how Jojo's kind of changed the landscape a little bit, especially when it comes to Shonen. There's an argument argument to be made that without Jojo's, there may never have been a One Piece. Did because Oda, Oda has said or... how like Araki getting into like being a mangaka and being a a serialized mangaka is one of the things that really inspired him to create One Piece. So holy oh shit! God. Like, but it's true that like this manga really made waves and changed the landscape around it, as, as you said. Yeah. And we'll just see more example of this the further along we go in this podcast. Um, uh, in Chinoda, regards to I'm... what you asked, well, in regards to what you asked, though, like, oh yeah. Something that has always surprised me about part one is I, I cannot bring myself to hate it in any way. I don't think it's the best part of JoJo's by far. In fact, in terms of JoJo's, it might actually be the least exciting part. But I'm still impressed going back and rewatching it, just how much was established in part one. And especially in terms of the anime in only nine episodes. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. It's great. They managed to condense this part so succinctly i guess yeah you would say, right? and and for those who don't know there's like three to three and a half chapters of the manga that aren't even in this adaptation at all it's a quick read though it's only yeah. 44 chapters i think yeah it's one. something around 40 to 50 chapters it's it's a very quick read what about you chinoda so i i have problems with as everyone has said there there are problems with this part especially when it comes to story and there is a hump that you have to get over to enjoy but once you do get over that hump um you can enjoy jojo for what it is and what it presents not to mention the fact that um this a lot i've i remember years ago i've heard a lot of people say yeah, you can just skip part one, uh, get into the rest of it. And it's one of those things that I vehemently disagree with. It sets up so much story. It, it sets up the whole story of JoJo up to... It uh, sets up the returning villain from, like, literally 90% of the <laughs> yeah, of from, from future volumes. <laughs> from literally the beginning. And while you can just eventually guess or get get a brief little flashback later on you can't connect or appreciate the true wildness and evilness of Dio and know what type of trouble that the main uh, heroes and heroines are truly in if you don't watch part one 
and for that i i truly do appreciate part one the music was uh i, mean, I think okay. it's weird to try to like get into part two without understanding the stone mask in part one like yeah that's i've heard people this... do that though i have yeah, heard of people very doing weird. that it's so connected to part one i i mean it's so connected that on crunchyroll they call part one part one and two part one yeah it's kind of it's weird. the same season basically but yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah i mean it, it continues into it but it's like technically yeah. it's not the same part i think but. you could easily start jojo's at part three though because in part three they kind of uh give you a brief synopsis of like dio and what happens but it's kind of why would you because there's so much to like even though it's there's so much of... to unpack about dio though yeah i know you it's can't fully just pro, bro, let, let me put it this way if you start with part three you're missing out on part two which yeah you is are awesome you yeah, so I, love got... <laughs> I love yeah, part two. I love I can't wait for us part two. Is part incredible. two. <laughs> See, I part was, was <laughs> like Shinoda was saying, I was going to skip part one on the spoiler cast just so I could be on part two. Because <laughs> that's I'm the one I want to talk us. about. <laughs> yeah. But, one but... thing I do want to very quickly mention, though, because we haven't talked about it much, but we're about to wrap up. I, I do really want to give a shout out to the direction and the style of the anime is even in part one, remarkable. Like the change in color and the the, the oh, yeah. again time, the direction like, it's itself. It's supposed to go nighttime, like dark or whatever. They change the color palette, and it's just it's pretty cool. When it's like a revelation, it's like, oh no, he used this technique, like how the colors shift completely to show like the how like the thought process of the characters. Like that's something we'll see more and more going forward. But like, just want to give a quick shout out because this adaptation is like the de facto adaptation. I think. There is for JoJo, and for a good reason because they, you can tell like the people who worked on it really loved the source material how they adapted it. Yeah, um, and I mean, there is an argument that could be yeah. made that without JoJo's Part One, would David Productions be as big as it is right now? Without the of JoJo's, I oh, doubt it. Probably I don't think so, honestly. I mean, they've done some other decent stuff besides JoJo's. Oh, absolutely, they've done. Yeah, but their their future stuff. work is what. The reason they got their future work was because of JoJo's, though. Yeah, definitely. I would For argue sure. one of the reasons they survived uh, this long is because of JoJo. <clears throat> yep. But um, I think that's about it. Is there any oh, other we, like we cut thoughts? off Shinoda? <laughs> Mid I, I cut off Shinoda. Oh, sorry. We <laughs> I, I just completely forgot about that. What were you gonna finish off your talk about? Uh, part one. The rewatch. What was I saying? Um, something about the music. I think the oh, music yeah. was fine. Music was fine. Uh, good at certain, very good at certain parts. Um, the visuals were fantastic. It was very stylistically uh, chosen, and I appreciate that. Sometimes it was a little bit weird, but I stuck through it, and I definitely appreciated uh, what they chose to uh, do. Um, overall, I think it was a great package uh, that they put out to us. And even after rewatching it all these years later, I appreciate what they gave and what it led to. Freaking 12 years old, this anime. Yeah. yeah. I'd also like to point out, since you mentioned David Productions, if you are like curious and you haven't checked out any of the other stuff, uh, check out their remake of Odyssey Yatsura. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. Definitely check out Sakurada Reset, right, Natai? Don't check out Sakurada <laughs> Reset. Don't. don't. Listen, so yeah, I think that's even, about even it. Even the best have off days, Natai. <sighs> that was an off, like capital O off day. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so that's about for part one. David Productions. <laughs> yeah, the we don't talk about Sakura like Reset anymore. We're done. That's a wrap <laughs> for part one. I'm super pumped to talk about part two next time when we get to it. That'll be a really fun discussion. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for dropping in to watch us. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, let us know what you thought about part one in the comments below as well. We'd like to hear what you thought about it as well. And how much you liked or didn't like it. Um, check down below to find links to Anime Club After Dark on Twitter, TikTok, and Discord to always be in the loop with what is going on and chat with us and other fellow fans. Uh, we're fairly active in the Discord server as well. We also have a channel for like questions, whatever. Some good stuff there. We also stream. And we fight for stream. democracy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Check our Twitch stream for a lot of hell divers too, as well. That's been a lot of fun to see you guys fuck around in. Um, we have a merch store down there as well with shirts, mugs, stickers, and more to show off your love 
of Iron Club After Dark as your friends and family and whatnot. And with that, I've been your host, Itai, and we will see you next time. Say good night, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jojo. Well, I didn't show Jojo. you guys with Jojo pants. I just realized. No, don't oh, stand yeah, up. Jojo pants. <laughs> Jojo pants. Oh, Jojo pants. Oh my god. We're all cursed with this knowledge now. <laughs> Wait, I'll do the, the Jonathan pose. Dun 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 dun